So when you think about gardening, you might be put off by all those long words and unpronounceable Latin names of plants. You need to think about the attack of unwanted plants in your garden by those pesky weeds, never mind all those bugs and diseases that can affect your plants. So before you start, you need to know a little bit of information about your garden or plot. So what sort of conditions do you have? Because once you know that, you can select the right plants for your site and then you'll not waste any time and money of choosing the wrong plants for your environment. So you need to know your type of soil, how much light you have and typical weather conditions. Does your garden or plot have problems with winds? And is it cold or is it a sunny and sheltered spot? So let's think about your garden or plot. Remember that your garden or plot is unique and everyone's will be different, just like how you and I are different. So your garden and plot will have different conditions that work together, which then helps you to decide what you can successfully grow. Once you understand your garden or plot, and you understand its character, then you'll be well on your way to becoming a gardener. So let's have a look and see how you can understand what conditions you have in your garden or plot. We'll have a look at light, moisture, temperature, wind and soil type. Now remember that soil is an essential part for each plant you grow and it's far from being dull and boring. It's made up of humus, which is organic matter, and three different types of particles, clay, silt and sand. It also provides a plant with an anchor for its roots, its water and nutrients. Did you know that when you look at a border, all you see is the topsoil? So if you dig down 30 to 60 centimetres or, or 1 to 2 foot and you notice a change, this change is the difference between the topsoil and the subsoil. The subsoil is normally the mucky stuff that plants won't grow in. In some new gardens, especially on newly built estates, they normally have heavy soils. That clay subsoil has been spread over the natural topsoil and then covered with a thin layer of topsoil and then turfed. It's worth checking because if your topsoil is only thin, then the subsoil can only cause you and your plants problems. For example, if it's clay, this can cause water logging in winter. If it's sandy or chalky, it might cause dehydration in summer. But don't worry about this, you can fix it. All you need to do is grab yourself some well-rotted bulky organic manure and this will greatly improve the quality of your soil. So what are the different types of soil? There are six main types. These are clay, sandy, silty, peaty, chalky and loamy. So how do you identify which type of soil you have? Here's what to look out for. Clay soil. It feels lumpy and sticky when very wet. Rock hard when dry. Clay drains poorly. It has few air spaces. It warms slowly in spring. It's heavy to cultivate. However, if drainage is improved, plants grow well as it holds more nutrients than many other soils. Sandy soil. It's a free draining soil. It's gritty to the touch. It warms up quickly in spring. It's easy to cultivate, however it dries out rapidly and it may lack nutrients, which are easily washed through the soil in wet weather. Silty soil. Now this is smooth and soapy to the touch. It's well-drained soil. It retains moisture. It's richer in nutrients and more fertile compared to sandy soil. It's easier to cultivate than clay, but heavier than sand. The soil structure is weak and easily compacted but it's very good if it's well managed. Peaty soil. This contains a much higher proportion of organic matter because the soil's acidic nature inhibits decomposition, but this means there are fewer nutrients. It's dark in color. It warms up quickly in spring. It's highly water retentive and may require drainage, but it's fantastic for plant growth if fertilizer is added. Chalky soil. This is alkaline with a pH of 7.5 or more. It's usually stony. It's free draining. It often overlays chalk or limestone bedrock. And this means some minerals such as magnesium and iron become unavailable to plants, which can cause poor growth and yellowing leaves. But this can be remedied easily by just adding fertilizers. Loamy soil. This is the perfect soil. It's got good structure. It drains well. It retains moisture, it's full of nutrients, it's easy to cultivate, it warms up quickly in spring and it doesn't dry out in summer. 
consider yourself very lucky if you have this type of soil. You might be thinking, how can I improve my soil? Well, to improve your soil, you can dig in well-rotted organic matter, and in the case of clay soils, use grit or sharp sand as well. A way to test your soil is to get outside and water an area of soil with a watering can. Surface water disappears quickly on sandy or gravelly soils, but will remain longer on a clay soil. You can take a handful of soil and gently squeeze. If it feels slimy and sticky, and when you release your grip the lump stays in shape, then it's clay. Sandy or gravelly soils feel gritty, and the lump crumbles apart when you release your grip. Peaty soils feel spongy, and loam sand silt feels smooth and retain their shape for longer than sand soil, but not rigidly as clay. Another test is to add half a handful of soil to a large glass jar. Fill with water, stir it well, and then leave it to settle for a couple of hours, and then have a look at what you have. Sandy or gravelly soil, now most of the sandy particles sink and form a layer on the bottom, and the water will look pretty clear. For clay, the water will be cloudy with a thin layer of particles on the bottom, as the tiny clay particles take ages to settle. Peaty, you'll see lots of bits floating on the surface, and the water will be a bit cloudy, and a small amount of sediment is sitting on the bottom. With chalky soil, you'll see a layer of white, gritty fragments on the bottom, and the water is a pale greyish colour. And with loamy soil, the water will be fairly clear with a layered sedimentation on the bottom, with the finest of particles on the top. Soil pH values. So in addition to the different types of soils, there's also another characteristic which is called pH. And this is the measurement of whether your soil is acid or ericaceous, which has a pH between 1 and 7. For example, peaty soils. Or is it a neutral, which has a pH of exactly 7? For example, some clay soils. Or is it an alkaline or limey, which has a pH of between 7 and 14? For example, chalky soils. Most soils within the UK have a range of between pH 4 and 8.5, and depending on what your pH levels are will depend on what plants you can grow. Most plants prefer a pH of 6.5 to 7. This is where nutrients are most available, but some are ericaceous, which means they need an acid soil, like most rhododendrons, or they may prefer an alkaline soil. So be warned, because if you put an acid-loving plant in an alkaline soil, it will suffer and may die, and vice versa. So rule of thumb, if you have soft water, you may well have acid soil, and if you have hard water, then the local soil may well be alkaline. But to be sure, just do a soil test, and you can buy these from your local garden centre or online. Once you know the soil pH, you can alter it if you need to or you want to, if it's on a large scale, I won't bother because it's expensive and the results won't last. A common practice is to lime the soil. It's particularly common when growing vegetables and will raise the pH from one level to another, but it's never worth trying to make alkaline soils more acid. If it's on a small scale, you can create raised beds and fill them with different soils, or use pots using the relevant compost. Thank you for watching. Now all you need to do is to survey your plot and the light, moisture, temperature, wind and soil. And you can begin to plan and design. So look out for episode 6 and let's get growing as we focus on selecting plants.